Welcome to the sixth video of the Thread Network series. In this video we will make a practical example with the application protocol CoAF and our NIF52840 developer kits. In the last video we learned already the theory about uh, CoAF, so if you didn't watch it, maybe you take a look at it first. We learned there that CoAF is quite similar to HTTP, but it's specially designed for embedded system, so perfectly fitting for IoT and WSM devices. It's using uh, not TCP as transport layer, it's using UDP, so it's fitting perfectly uh, to be used with a uh, thread on top at the application layer. Uh, Core app is also a client-server communication uh, like HTTP, and today we will implement <coughs> a client-server structure like this. Normally we have five different methods to uh, communicate with the server. You can make a GET request <coughs> where we just ask the server for data. This is a read-only request. For example, if it's a temperature server, we can ask for the temperature. But then the server needs a sensor and this server has an always to be on for uh, answers the request. And with a battery-powered uh, device, which is uh, quite common with uh, WSM devices, it's not the best solution. So uh, the second one is a PUT request. The PUT request we will implement this time. Um, we are just uh, writing with this data to the server, so uh, we can then write our sensor data to the server. We yeah. make the PUT request with IP address, the port, and the resource which we want to reach, and then sending the data. Optional, we can ask for uh, acknowledgments and send the node to the server answer is an acknowledgement. As basis, we are taking the project files from our UDP example. We are using the UDP receive project and making a copy from it from the fourth video. Uh, just rename it to co-op servers since we have to implement a server and a client, we are starting with the server. And also inside we are renaming the project files. The last one we can delete, we just have here core app server. And we start the project, and also inside we are renaming our project. Then we just close it, so the new uh, changes are saved and taken from Sega Embedded Studio. So in the first step I make here a little bit the form picker so that you can see the code better. So, so I think this is okay. Uh, I will uh, again copy mostly uh, the most parts since my typing is not so fast. I um, copy it from a text file, the source code mainly. But I will explain it. The first thing what we are needing is um, a new header file since we're needing the core app functionality and we implement uh, we include the core app header file. And now um, we will yeah, not make a trick, but the client needs to know the IP address from the server to make a request. But um, since every time when we erase all the data, it's getting a new IP address and so on, it's quite difficult to find it sometimes out. We can make a discovery also with core app for the IP address, but this will be a little bit confusing at the beginning and we just make it as easy. We defined a special IP address. Um, for this I uh, define a new function which is called add IPv6 address. I just define it here and uh, yeah, like normal I getting the thread instance again and then I define a variable for the IP address I define a variable for the mesh local prefix and using the function get um, ot thread get mesh local prefix to get this 
prefix. I could set it only also manually, but then I have to be sure that it's the same what we are setting in the data set. Yeah, so we define it already down here. So I don't have to define it again. I'm just using the function. Yeah, so this will be this uh, mesh local prefix. And in the next step, I'm setting the interface ID, and I just using the first um, ID. So just one. Everything is zero except the last byte it's one and then I copy it in the IP address with mem copy first as a mesh local prefix the eight bytes or so 64 bit and then the interface ID and afterwards I'm setting with the function OT IP6 at unicast address this IP address so our server will get an additional IP address and then just checking for error and this was was it. Before I start now to implement, I will predefine um, the head of a function of two function, which I used to to define the resource. And um, this will be the function which is called when our server uh, get a request. Yeah, so store data request handler function. The other one uh, I make just we need it also, but um, I wouldn't have to predefine it. But for a better overview, I define it also. This is the function for the response which we send. Um, uh, looks like this uh, head from this function. So I predefine this function here, and then I can set our resource. The resource. Will be defined like this. Uh, this is not. Um, uh, this is just a temporary uh, variable which we need for storing uh, the text. Yeah, uh, our uh, data which we're getting, and here I define a co-op re resource. And you're seeing that the URI path is store data, and our handler which is then called is the store data request handler. Uh, this, this means. When this um, resources is reached, our request handler will be called. Now we uh, implement our store data request handler. So I just copy it first and then I will explain it. So we are just passing the message what we are getting and uh, storing the code and the type. The code is what method uh, is called. We are only interested on a, a put method. So we just handle um, request which is a put request. And also we are only handle confirmable and non-confirmable message. So we are also checking the message type. If it's an acknowledgement or reset, we don't have to handle it. So, and we're doing again the trick with the do while loop. Yeah, uh, one time the do part will be called, and if there's an error, we just make a break. So, if it's a message type is not a confirmable or non confirmable message, so we just ignore this request and doing nothing further. And also, if it's not a put request. If it's a put request and a confirmable or non confirmable, then we uh, uh, call the uh, OT message reads. This means we are reading the message and store it in our um, in the my text, uh, which we defined before here up here. Yeah? I make a temporary char with uh, yeah, thirty uh, char size, and the length I set at the beginning as zero, but uh, we get the length from the OT message read. Yeah? So there I know. The length and the last uh, char what we are setting there is um, this special char, and I set it at the end. And afterwards, I'm just giving this out over the command line interface. Yeah, this text. If it's then also a confirmable message, then we send also the response here. Yeah. This means in the next step, we have to implement the response part. For this, I'm copying just store data response and uh, the function in our source code. 
this function getting as parameters uh, original request message and also the message info to this request. Then we are creating a response message as a variable for it and um, storing also the thread instance in a variable with the function otqip new message. We are creating a new message in this variable and afterwards we are calling the function ot coap message in its response to filling the parameter of this message with a uh, appropriate parameter for a response. So uh, we're giving the request message as parameter also and setting the type of the response as acknowledgement. And the code we are setting to change since uh, this is a normal code what we are setting as answer when we are getting a put request. Then we are calling the function send response with our thread instance and the response message and the message info. So there are standing the IP address and the port number. If everything went right, we are finished. If there is an error, then we have to freeze the message. If not, it's blocking still memory. Now we have to uh, bring the core part together in a core app init function. Copy it also and place it in our code. This function um, just uh, starting the core app module with a thread instance as parameter and the default core app port. And then we are adding our resource the resource which we defined up, um, let's take a look at it, it's the store data resource with our store data request handler. Um, this is actually all and then when we call this function, the core observer is running. Let's take a look at the flow diagram, which is quite similar to the UDP program before. We initialize the logger, the scheduler and app timer modules, then the thread instance. We're adding an IPv6 address, setting the network parameter, starting the network, the thread network, and then we uh, calling the function co -op in init, which starting the co -op server and ad adding the resource stored data. And this part is a while loop, so the function thread process is always we're calling in the uh, while loop and also the scheduler execute. And if it's possible, the device try to go into sleep mode. Our main function looks then like this. I just copy it again and place it here. It doesn't change so much to the UDP programming, but still a little bit. So, uh, one. So we're seeing here log in it, scheduler in a timer in it, thread instance in it, at IPv6 address, then set network parameter, thread network start, and the co-op in it. And this is the part for running the thread processes. Now we can just build it. Uh, so I have an error. Okay, so this is uh, the text buffer. I have to uh, give here the size of the text before I used macro, but to make it easier, I uh, uh, replace it with a fixed size. So um, since the length which is available for us is 29, because the last um, char will be uh, the delimiter for the char. So we're having just 29 spaces for storing the message. So um, we can place here directly 29. So then build. Yeah, and then everything is okay. Now we can transfer this data to our module. I connect First, then I read again all, and then I uh, download the core observer. Now 
now I can already start put here for connecting with this core app server and uh, let's see the IP addresses and we're seeing here our new IP addresses. Now we have to implement our client module, the flowchart looking similar. We initialize the logger, the scheduler and app timer module, then the thread instance. Uh, we don't have to set any IP address uh, since it's a client, not the server. So we are going directly in set network parameter. Then starting the thread network, then we are uh, going into co-op in it. So we just have to start the co-op module. We don't have to register any resource. Afterwards, we have an extra state. We initialize a button and register a button handler. Every time when the button is called, we are calling the function co-op send data request, which uh, just uh, sent a co-op request. Uh, then this part is just the while loop with the thread process, the scheduler execute, and if it's possible, let's try to go into sleep mode the device. As basis, we are taking the UDP send project, just copy it again, rename it to co-op client. Also the project file, so we can delete, rename. Then we're starting the project and also here rename the project. So one time restart, yes, save the changes, restart the program make it bigger and the first thing of course we have to add the header from the core app module. In the next step we predefine a few functions, the header of them so that we can use them where we want. So we're needing three functions, a BSP event handler for the button, co-op data, uh, co-op send data request and a response handler for the answer what we are getting since we are sending a confirmed message. The co op send data request function I call the copy also in the source code. Um, let's see what happens there. So I, uh, we initialize first the variables, there we uh, need a threat instance, uh, getting an OT message, uh, defining an OT message variable, message info for the message we want to send, uh, defining the server IP variable, and send the text what we want to send via formatted as JSON string. Then we create a co-op message, uh, setting the code and the type of the message, setting the URI path, then setting the payload format and the payload delimiter, uh, this is one byte which everything is uh, set to one, and then we uh, append the payload. Then we're setting the message info, so the co-op port and the server IP, and then we start, we trigger the co-op send request include um, including also the response handler which should be called when we're getting the answer. So let's take a look in our source code here. So this is what our function does, defining the variables, use the server IP address as char string, the thread instance, uh, the variable for the message and the message info, and the temperature um, as JSON string. So Restore here. Then we are creating a new message, uh, so name my message. Then we init the message, so um, we initialize a few parameters with this function OT co op message in it and setting the type to confirmable and the code to a 
input afterwards <coughs> we are setting the URI path so the resource what we want to reach this is store data we defined at the server then we uh, append the content format from, from the payload we sending JSON format and then we are adding the payloader marker so the delimiter with everything one in the my message and then we append our message with the my temperature JSON variable and the length of the <coughs> it. Um, then we initialize uh, my message info so we uh, initialize it every first with zero the variable then we setting the port the default port for co-op we're using the macro um, this is also defined at the server then we are converting the string to a, to a format for our message info um, for this we're using the function otip6 address from string giving the string as parameter and where we want to store it and we want to store it in the my message info dot uh, address and then we trigger the co-op send request and in the co-op send request we are uh, giving the, as parameters a thread instance our message the message info the response handler which should be called when we're getting an answer yeah, if there went something wrong, we uh, free the uh, um, space, the memory space again from my message. If everything is okay, then we just print something out called da data send. In the next step, we are implementing the response handler. This is quite short. We don't do here a lot. We are just printing out that the delivery is confirmed uh, so that we know everything went uh, okay. So this is always a command line interface we printed out. If there went there something wrong we only print out over the logger. Then in the next step we are implementing the function co-op in it. This is also quite short. We did already before. Um, we just start here the so co-op module with the default co-op port. And in the last step, we are implementing the BSP event handler function. Yeah, and this function just call when we are pressing button one. So with the macro key zero, uh, we are just sending the co-op send data request. Um, yeah. And now we have to bring this all together in the main function. So it's actually quite similar. We have just to exchange a little bit. So you're seeing we're having here uh, the corp in it, which we are adding. And here is also the BSP event handler registered. You can directly compile it. Okay, we have here an error because there was already an event handler defined and I put the function again there. This is our new one and the old one is here. I just deleted. Uh, I could just exchange here before the function. Okay, just deleted. Build. And everything went okay. Now we are connecting to our device. Be careful that you are choosing not the server again, that you are choosing the right device. Then we are erasing all and download the part, the firmware. Now let's open a second put here for our client. Just check if it's running. State is a router, this the server is the leader, and we can directly now push the button and seeing if the data uh, is sent. So we are seeing here every time 
uh, we're getting the information from the client called data is sent and we're directly getting all this uh, acknowledgement from the server that it's delivered and on the server just print out the temperature in JSON format. You can also take a look in Wireshark, how a package looks there. Seeing from our source to the server, yeah, we're seeing the interface ID 1. Um, it's a core app message and it's a confirmable one. The code is a put code. So Option, the URI path is store data to our resource and the content format is JSON. And um, we see here also the payload, the payload length is 22 and the content is then here is the JSON format temperature 23.32. <coughs> we get also the answer from the server, so from source one to uh, our IP address and uh, we're seeing here just an acknowledgement and the code type is changed what we're setting as answer. Now we implemented a co-op client uh, application with our NRF developer kits and we are able to send data from the client to the server. Uh, now would be nice of course to uh, connect the client with an sensor and also sending send the sensor data directly to the server then we are having a real uh, wireless sensor uh, network and communication. I hope it was understandable and uh, I put also the source code uh, like normal in the description that you can download it and uh, have fun to try it out. Leave a comment if you have uh, to say something for improvement or whatever and see you in the next video.